trading at its best. We've got uh, quite a few of you, I think, here that are that are new to our weekly webinars. Um, now, what we do in these webinars is just cover the topic that we kind of summarized in the blog post, um, and we get into more detail. We go on the charts and uh, answer questions. So it's really nice to come and actually attend these webinars if you can make it. Good thing is if you come in late or you can't make one of them, we do post a replay on the same page where you signed up, which is tradewestforex.com slash webinar slash weekly. And you can, if you don't remember that link, just go to our, <coughs> excuse me, just go to our um, blog at tradewestforex.com slash blog, and that you can find all that stuff there. But uh, just to in introduce myself really quick for those of you that don't know me, I'm Mike Swanson, founder of Trade West Forex. You might have seen us uh, recently talking about our program, Momentix, and Pipstat, and we'll, we'll even talk a little bit about Pipstat today. But uh, I've been trading for almost a decade, actually, nine years. So it's been full time and uh, a good chunk of the time, almost ha probably half the time, I've been teaching traders and uh, building software products. So let's just get into it and take a look at what we're going to be talking about today. Should I use a stop loss? I get this question a lot, and I think a lot of people are confused with different myths and things that they, they've been sucked into by people that are not traders, that are just pure marketers teaching them things that don't make sense. So we're going to hope to clear that, you know, get, the, get a clean slate of what's, what's what uh, as far as stop losses go. So we'll be talking about what exactly a stop loss is, just the basics of it. We will look at um, what stealth mode is and where to place your stop loss. So those are some of the things we're going to be talking about today as well as some trading tools that you can use that can determine uh, the best places to put stop losses. So let me, before we get into this stuff, let's just uh, cruise over to our blog just so you can see what we've got there. Let's see here, okay. So this, like I say, it's just tradewestforex.com slash blog, and this is where you'll see all of our previous posts, and then you'll see the links pretty much in every post. We put a link to the webinar, which is probably how you got here today, but you'll also see that's where the replays are at. So if I click here, you'll see that uh, here's where the replays are posted. So after this webinar is over, you'll scroll down to the bottom and you'll be able to find the, the replay. It might take us a few hours to get that up for it to render and everything, but that's where you'll find them. So you can review them um, and you can go back and see all of our past topics and webinars we've had. Okay, so now let's just uh, go ahead and talk about today's uh, topic which is should you be using a stop loss? Now, a lot of people want to know, uh, you know what exactly a stop loss is. Some people are still even confused on that. When we're referring to a stop loss, we're talking, we're talking about the actual order that you place with your brokerage. And actually, I'm going to bring up the charts here. So what we're talking about is the actual order that you place with your brokerage. So if you go in here, um, and you know when you go to take a trade, you can put a stop and a target in. See how this is a stop loss? So if I will just take a test trade here, you'll see right here, this is where I'd place my stop loss. I could right click, uh, modify the order, you know, I can put a stop loss in. And let's do a little test here. Okay, now there's an actual stop loss order, uh, abbreviated SL. You'll see that a lot too. It, it's actually on my order, so if my brokerage uh, price reaches that level, the broker will automatically close my order uh, when it's reached. So that's what an actual stop loss order is. Some people think that um, you know stop orders are for entering the market, and there is a form of order that does that as well. If you go in here to pending order, you can use a sell stop. So that's not a stop loss. That's a, a lim or an entry order to get into the market at a price that is worse than the current price. These are commonly used for breakout trades where you want to um, you know, buy at a higher price when the market breaks. In that case, you'd use a buy stop. 
Okay. Um, so that's how these orders work. Uh, the difference, like I say, is some traders uh, will look at a stop loss as when it hits a certain price, they're going to close it out with a loss, but they don't actually put the order in. Now, the, the danger in doing that is that, let's say you, you have your internet connection go down. For some reason, you lose internet connection, um, or let's say your computer shuts off and you're not there to close the trade, or you, your broker has issues with their server and you can't connect. Any kind of technical issue like that would prevent you from being able to get out of the market. You'd have to call up your brokerage and tell them, you know, find out where the price is and tell them to make sure they get you out, um, or maybe even just close the trade immediately. So that's the problem with not using a stop. Um, whereas, you know, with a stop loss that's on your broker's end, you, all that could go wrong, but, and they'll still close the trade for you. You don't even have to be there. Now, that's all kind of the pros of putting a stop in. Some of the cons that maybe aren't really problems is that uh, is some of the myths really is that putting a stop loss in basically shows the rest of the market your stop and and actually the broker sees your stops as well and this is where stealth mode comes in some people have decided that I have been taught that putting a stop loss in is a bad idea because your brokerage will see it and hunt your stops down okay how many of you think that that's what really happens, that you're, if you put a stop in on your order, it's a bad idea because the broker is going to hunt it down and stop you out. You guys can use the chat if you'd like. Okay, I know I've worked with a lot of traders and this constantly comes up and a lot of people would rather not show their broker their stops. Well, here's the thing, okay. There are some brokerages that we could call we call a bucket shop brokerage where they make money when you lose money. They're basically trading on the opposite side of you. Now, a few years ago, there was a lot more of those brokerages out there. Um, but because of different regulations that's been put in place and just the way the, the market direction has been going with ECNs and different things, uh, but there's not really a lot of those brokerages anymore. Um, but if you feel like that's what's constantly happening to you still, if you use stop losses and you feel like they keep top taking you where it just comes up and hits your stop and then goes back the other way, or if you're looking at another price feed and your broker went up 10 pips more than the other, then that's some signs that you've got a bucket shop you're working with. And that's when you would want to um, you know, switch brokerages. And the brokerage we use is uh, FinFX, I'm just going to post a link for you guys here in the chat. These guys, we've been trading with them for a few years now, and, and I've had plenty of my trades where the market, you know, my stop loss will be sitting right here. You know, maybe I bought it up here somewhere. I'll be sitting here watching the market take off, and it'll come sometimes even a tenth of a pip from my stop, and I still won't get top ticked, you know, where they take me out and go the other way. So if they were a bucket shop, this would have been easy because, you know, they would have said, oh, let's just bump our price another pip on this guy and take him out. But I've had many trades like this where that's, that's not happened. Now, it's not always going to be the case. There will be times that it's a normal market move, you know, where it does just barely hit you and go the other way. And that's where you want to try to calculate a better place to put your stop. And I'll talk about that here in a minute. But, um, but that's your first thing is, is uh, don't worry about putting stops into the market because some bro your broker is going to hunt it down. If that's the problem, like I say, move brokerages if you feel like that's what's happening. Um, the next thing is stop loss orders do actually get shown to the rest of the market as liquidity by uh, many different brokerages. They actually have what's called centralized liquidity. liquidity. <laughs> and what that means is they're allowing their traders in-house to offer liquidity to their other traders. And possibly if they're a liquidity provider, such as Dukascopy, they'll allow you to offer liquidity to the rest of the market uh, through their other sources. Now, that can be, you could use that to your advantage, but I, we're not going to get into how that's done today. But uh, mainly, you don't have to worry so much about that because your order is such a small amount that you're really not going to have much impact on the market. I could go bring up the Dukascopy platform where we can see liquidity and market depth, and you'll see that there are hundreds of lots at the current price 
on both sides of the bid and the ask. So your little stop loss order in there is not going to, you know, attract the market. <laughs> this way we could, you could say, I guess. Um, so, anyways, now that I, we got that cleared out, that there, uh, the whole thing with needing to use stealth mode or hiding your stops is really not necessary. Um, so let me talk about now what stealth mode, exactly what that is, if it wasn't clear yet. Uh, basically, when traders take place a trade, let's say we're over here and they, uh, they decided to buy somewhere in here on this candle, okay? Let's get a little pen tool out. I'll see if this will work for us. Let's say they bought right in here. Yep, it's not going to work. Oh, well. Okay. Well, they bought on this candle. The market, uh, they knew his market was going to head up, and they decide to put their stop loss, you know, right where I got that line maybe, or maybe even bump it up a little bit. Let's say it's right here. Well, instead of actually placing the order like this, where it's actually there's a price on the broker server that's being held, what they will do is leave it at zero. Okay, so I'll just modify that back to zero. They'll have no stop on the broker's server. So therefore, you know, hiding the stop from the broker and the rest of the market. Then when the price comes down, what they're supposed to do when it hits that level is close the trade, right? So it's stealth mode because nobody sees it except they, you know, they have maybe a line on their chart or just an alert or something that says, if it gets there, I need to get on here and close it out. The problem is, what if that stop was up here a little bit further? What if the market was really taken off and started pushing below that support level or that line where you're supposed to get out? If you're not right there ready to pull the trigger, you're going to most likely get out down here, maybe even at the worst spot if it's really moving fast. Whereas, you know, if you had an actual stop loss order that was specified, it would have got filled at that price. Now, I want to, want to mention, though, that not all of these orders are guaranteed. You might have a stop loss that is, that is sitting there, and the market comes down really fast during news, and it will actually still get a little bit of slippage. It will show you the best available price uh, that you can get filled at and close your trade there. So you still you can't guarantee anything with the stop loss, but it's still going to be better than trying to get out at the market with the market order by clicking the button. Other things that can happen is the market will gap on the weekends, and regardless if you're using stealth motor stops, you're still only going to be able to get filled at the best available price. So either way, that's something you got to be careful about with using stop losses or stealth mode, is fast market movements or gaps in the market from weekends or fast price movements as well. Okay, so let's see here. We've covered um, we covered what a stop is and the stealth mode approach. Now, the next thing that really comes up is where should you be putting your stop losses? So you know, if you if you're looking at the market, you really need to determine that before you even place the trade. So if we're back over here, you know, we don't know where to put that stop. You're trying to figure that out. You want to determine that before you place the trade. And the reason why is because you need to figure out how much to risk on the trade. If you don't know how far the market's going to go against you or you don't try to have a plan, turn off auto scroll here. If you don't at least have a plan in place, how can you how do you even calculate your your lot size? Because what if your stop loss only needed to be right here versus you know way out here? That's much that's a lot different that's a big difference you know up here you're going to be able to trade a bigger lot size than you would way out here so you need to have a way of determining that ahead of time so what a lot of traders will do is they'll either just have a fixed stop loss amount that they use for every trade okay or they will use the previous swing low that's the most common method so they'll go and look at support and resistance so they'll say okay here's the previous swing low maybe they put it a few pips past that well, that's fine. It is good to have a plan. It's better than not having a plan. But here's the problem is, you know, if you use a basic approach like this, especially just a fixed amount, you know, 20 or 30 pips, that doesn't really mean anything. Um, but especially using something like this where you use support and resistance, well, that's where the market kind of does hunt. It's not your broker seeing your order. This is why this myth has probably come about 
is a lot of people do put stops below support or above, re above resistance. And that is where the market is attracted. So it has nothing to do that you put your actual price of your order there and your broker is hunting you down. It's that the market is naturally attracted to support and resistance areas. That's where the market will test. It will test to see if there are significant uh, orders and liquidity to prevent the market from breaking out. If there is not, the market will break out. If there's a small amount of orders, it might fill some of those to try to attempt to break out. And if it can't, that's when it whipsaws back the other way. So let me show you some different examples of this. Okay, here's one right over here. You know, here's a, a significant support level. The market dipped down right here, and then it, found, it generated a support level. Well, now let's say you're a trader over here about to buy. Maybe you bought right here. And you say, okay, you look to the past. Let's just go over here and do, the, do it this way. So you're right here. You look to the left, and you say, okay, there's my support level. I'm going to put my stop just below that, right? Well, here you are. You put your stop on your broker with your broker, and you watch the market tick along, and it hits you. And you're thinking, oh, man, the broker's hunting my stop. Something's going on here especially when you watch it jump back up, you get really frustrated and you blame the broker, right? Well, like I just said, this is where the market naturally is going to test. You don't want to put your stops there. Look what happened. It did test that area. It sat there and bounced around. It found that there was quite a few stops there, including yours probably. Some of them got filled, some did not, because the market was filling liquidity of sellers, trying to break it out, and there was too many orders here. So it could not break out, and therefore it bounced back up. Does that make sense? Okay. So now let me explain to you. I could show you. I could show you many more examples of this. You know, I, let's just do one more, and then I'll move on. Let's do an example where it does break out. Okay. Okay. Let's say you sold right down here. No, it's not. Let's say you got in late. Let's just say you sold way down here. You felt like this breakout was taken off, and then you go and put a stop loss right there. So on, in this case, the market cruises along, didn't really get too far. Let's say you didn't get out. Maybe you scaled out, and you still had your stop up here. Well, here the market comes up and hits the stop loss. And you'll see it did go a good distance past, and it filled quite a few orders and then came back, and then eventually broke out really hard. See, here what happened is the market actually took out a lot of stop orders. It really just hit a ton of stops. So that pushed the market back, and then when it attempted it again, the market was thin. Liquidity was thin. And therefore, the market was able to break out with no problem. So, you know, this is why it's confusing for a lot of traders, because sometimes it breaks, sometimes it doesn't. And that's why it's the worst place to put stops, because it's just a gamble. It's a it's a guess at what's going to happen. Is it going to hold? Is it going to break? Okay, so let me now share with you a better a better approach to this, the way that I've done it and the software I created that does it this way. Okay, what I do is I don't use the market support and resistance. I don't use a fixed stop amount. I don't use a moving average. I don't use any technical indicator to do this for me. What I do is I use the uh, actual trades that I've placed in the past, I use the entry that I placed it with, and then the actual market conditions that played out during my trade. So let's say I, let's ha I held this trade from there to here. Okay, so during that time, I've got a formula that's going to analyze my trade, and then it's going to also analyze it for a certain amount of minutes that I specify after. So maybe I tell it to watch it for six hours after I close, excuse me, close the trade. So, you know, it's going to watch what happened after I close the trade. And then what it's going to do is try to determine what where would have been the ideal place to put the stop loss. And now, it doesn't just do this for one trade. It's going over all of my trading history and market conditions. And every time I make a new trade, it's going to keep adapting and changing. So for this trade, you know, it might have said, you don't need that big of a stop. Based on the past calculations, you know, it's coming in here and saying, you only need a stop maybe right here. So it can just get me out of the trade way before all this movement that takes off the other direction. So, you know, to some of you, you might see, well, why in the world would you put a stop right here in the middle of nothing? 
Well, that's because I've got a formula, a calculation that has figured out this is the best place to put it, and I have a very low probability of it being hit. So it took me a lot of time to figure out the, you know, the best probabilities to use in, in this formula and these calculations, but I've got it to the point where my stop losses are only hit about 15% of the time. So that's pretty dang good. And, you know, especially if you're looking at my win rate and my risk to reward ratio, you know, for some traders it might be different. If you have a high win rate, um, you know, or a really good risk to reward ratio system, there's just many different situations, but it could be better than that. You know, it could be it's calculating stops that are hit 5% of the time, or it could be 30% of the time. It all just depends. This is what's nice about doing this approach is there is no static calculation. It's different for everyone because everyone's got a different style of trading. You know, some traders might have sold up here. Their stop loss is going to need to be calculated differently. Some traders might have a whole different style of trading where, you know, they sold, they sold over here and didn't get out. Let's just keep moving the market along. You know, let's say they sold over here. They got out down here somewhere. Got too much stuff on my charts now. You know, another trader might have sold over here. They close some of their position out here, hold it, you know, till, you know, for days potentially. You know, this could be a trader that uses a one-hour chart and has a scaling out approach and then holds the rest of it for days or weeks. There's just so many different possibilities and styles of trading that you can't just use the previous support or resistance or a certain pip amount that doesn't really have any uh, advantage at all. So anyways, I hope I didn't, this is not too confusing. Let me see if I can just show you the tool I use and give you some examples here. Um, some of you might have heard about this tool. It's called PipStat. And let me show you how this tool works. So this is an application that runs with MetaTrader and allows you to, uh, you, you can place trades through it, and it, but what it's going to do is actually calculate the stop and target for you based on your trades you've been taking and the market conditions from those trades. Um, now there's another piece to this though. That's, you know, that's amazing that it's able to do that and give you these, the best place to put a stop that's going to have a, the best probability of keeping you in the market for a nice profit. But the other part of this is your stop loss, or is, sorry, your uh, lot size. Your lot size should be determined by your stop, right? Well, the stop lo or the uh, lot size in this case is based on my risk percent setting. So I've got just a two percent. I mean, that could be anything we want. It could be five. Um, and what it's doing is, if my stop loss is larger, I have to trade a smaller lot size. And that means I have to make more pips to make more profit, right? So obviously, a smaller stop loss is more beneficial. The smaller the stop loss I can have, the more money I'm going to make. And the less profit I actually have to make on my target. So now if we put this all together, let's go back and just look right here. Let's say you're a trader that sold right here. Or maybe not even right there. Let's just say you sold where that X is. You sold right there. You say, okay, my stop loss has got to be this previous resistance. So you put it in. That's an 85 pip stop approximately. So you have an 85 pip stop. Now, we don't, I don't know for sure. This is just an example. But let's say pip stat said you didn't need 85 pips. I don't use the previous support and resistance method. So it's going to maybe say you need a stop right here. Maybe it's half that amount. Let's just keep it easy and say it is half. So instead of... Uh, you know, instead of 80-something pips, it's a 40-pip stop. Well, watch what happens in here. Let's go in and just put 80. It would have said I can trade 0.29 lots. So if I made 80 pips profit, I make the same amount, you know, I make the same amount of money as my stop loss in both cases here. So see, I don't want to go through and do all the math here for you, but um, basically an 80-pip stop with point, let's just say 0.3, that would be uh, $240. So this means I'm risking $240 to make $240. But now let's say if PipStat didn't have to have that 80 pip stop, like I was saying here, it was only had to have a 40 pip stop. Watch what happens to the lot size when I put in 40. It almost doubled. What does that mean for my profit target now? 
I'm going to make twice as much money. Instead of making $240, I'm going to make 480 Twice as much profit, all because I was able to trade with a smaller stop loss. So that's why I decided to, have to teach this topic here today about stop losses because it really is a key piece to your trading. You know, it can make it so that if you, if you're, let's say your target's $200 on a trade, the smaller you can get your stop loss, the smaller that your target can be. You know, in this case, to get a $200 profit, I only need to have about a, uh, about a 30 pip, about a 35 pip target. Problem if I have to have an 80 pip stop. I've got to have, you know, a 70, 70 pip target. So you see how that can completely change your, the way you look at your trade for the, you know, that you're in. If your goal is to hit a certain dollar amount or profit amount on a trade, you have to change your entire strategy if your stop losses are larger, because now you've got to make a much larger target. So you can, hopefully, you can see that the stop is kind of an integral piece to your trading strategy, your trading plan. It kind of determines everything else. It's kind of the, that first building block to your strategy that if you don't have that down, how can, you pro how can you possibly figure out your lot size? How can you really figure out targets if it's affected by your stop loss? And this is where a lot of people don't do that. They don't adjust their targets by their stops. What they do is they just, you know, maybe they're shooting for 10 pips all the time. And what does that do? That puts you in a negative risk, you know, a, a poor risk to reward ratio. So you're sitting here losing 80 pips, and you've got to be right 90% of the time. And, you know, that's really difficult to do. Most systems can't be right 90% of the time, um, especially if, with a good risk-to-reward ratio. So let me, let me go ahead. I'm going to post a link. What we wanted to do is give you guys a chance to just try out PipStat, play with it, see, you know, see a different approach to calculating stop losses than just using support or resistance. And... Um, and just looking at the uh, you know ATR or whatever indicator you would you're looking at, try a, try a much different approach. Something that makes a lot of sense. Hopefully you can see here with we analyze your actual trades. You know if we see that you don't need the room, why why put a big stop in if if your trade history shows you don't need that much room on the trade. That's what we're doing here. We determine that based on your trading habits, your strategy, even if you don't change anything we figure out the best stops for you. So I'm going to post a link, and actually this, is, this link is actually just on our blog as well. And so you guys could go there if you'd like to. If you just go to tradewestforex.com slash blog, that last post, um, I put the link right in here where you can download a trial of PipStat. So if you want to go to that page, or I'll just post this page uh, link directly to you guys in the chat. Let's just post this link for you guys. Okay, that'll take you over to this page here, and um, you can read about that if you'd like. Just kind of summarizes some of the things I've talked about a little bit. Um, see some of the different features. I didn't expand this, but you can see that if you click this button here, there's scaling out abilities, scaling in. You know. Uh, Lots of cool stuff that you'll see once you try it out and you watch the little training video on it. But, um, but this tool makes a big difference. A lot of times, all a trader needs to do is modify their risk to reward ratio. And the best way to do that is to shrink your stop loss if you can. And it sounds easy, and it's really not without a tool that can you know, have an algorithm that's proven that can go in and do it. If you're trying to do it yourself, you'll find yourself just getting stopped out prematurely on trades. You know, we have a sophisticated system that goes in and, and figures out these optimal levels, but still keeps you in the trade. And still, you know, it's, it's even preventing the whole broker hunting down stops because you're not putting your stops in those places where everybody else's orders are at. Okay. And so, anyways, you can read over that. What we've got is a, you can try it out for a dollar, and that way... Uh, you can download it, try it out for an entire month, and see if it works for you. If, you don't, if you're not happy with it or you're, you don't think it really helped you out much, you can cancel, and there's no obligation. There's, it's just, that's the best way we found to do this. I think it really, it really puts, you know, we're putting the, the effort in and the risk up 
for you guys to try it out because you know we have we help our traders get that you know come to our webinars we help them get everything set up and um, and support them and so we, you know we're putting in we're putting up some effort to uh, show you that this thing works so anyways that I think that was the best way to do it I've given you guys the link you can go ahead and check it out if you guys have some questions about what we've talked about today with stop losses um, you know how they work, what they are, stealth mode, um, and Pipstat, Pipstat's approach. Just let me know. Type it in in the chat. Okay, Keith says he's, he was trying to download one, version 1.24. We just did release a new update. Um, we just did push out 1.24. It should have. It, what it does, we have automatic updates actually built into the system. So when there's a new update available, it'll automatically pop up, tell you, do you want to download this, hit yes or no. You hit yes, and any platform that has it installed will restart, it'll install for you, and re reopen it with all with one click of a button. So that, if, that's not, if it didn't work for you for some reason, uh, maybe you can check with our support guy, check with Ramin, and he can uh, possibly see if there's something we need to change or if, it, uh, or if this is something... Uh, on your end that we need to look into. Any questions? That's what these webinars are really all about is getting in here and you know as you can tell I've talked about a lot more than I did on the blog post. And um, but right on top of that it's more it's more about just coming in and and making sure you have a clear understanding of what I teach. That's what that's really the key to the webinar side of things. So questions will really help uh, really help you absorb everything that's being taught. You know, I could go over some more examples if you'd like. Um, the concept is really straightforward. I would say that the main the main point of this webinar is that putting stop losses above and below support and resistance is the big problem because traders are constantly getting you know, whipsawed out of trades, and then they end up blaming other people. They blame their broker. They blame they blame, you know, their strategy or something. When it's that's not the problem at all. It's that the market is, like I say, naturally attracted here. This is where the the market knows that there is liquidity. So when it goes up there, the market will test. Um, I'll tell you guys a little secret here. When I worked with the Swiss Bank, I found out. I saw firsthand what happens here. The banks will watch when market the market approaches support and resistance. They'll even sometimes uh, have orders. Let me give you an example here. They might have sold over here, you know, way back a few days ago. They've got a sell trade up here that they have to protect. So they don't want the market to intimidate that order and push up against it. So what they will do is start to sell into this move. They'll start to see, okay, what kind of liquidity do we have here? And they will start to sell um, and hit limit orders, hit stop orders during uh, during this attempt to break out to try to put pressure on the market to go back down. And but what they will do is I watched what they, this is kind of crazy, but as it'll get up there, they can see all the liquidity in the market. If the liquidity is really deep and there's plenty of it, then they know they should sell hard and push it back down. If the liquidity is thin, they might actually hedge and buy. And that's what causes these breakouts. In fact, that's a lot of what Momentix is doing. If you guys have seen our system, Momentix, is when there's breakouts taking place, we are jumping in and selling with that same attitude that we want to drive prices down as well if the market's thin. So you can see a couple sell trades here that we did that on the USCN overnight. But anyways, that's uh, that's why these levels, it seems like the market's doing that, and I guess you could say in a way it is. It's just it's not because of your specific order in there that the, the market's sitting there hunting you down like a lot of people think. Um, let's see. How to use Pipstat with another EA. This is something we've we've got some plans in the future to, to actually convert Pipstat into... Um, almost like a robot for a robot. What it would be able to do is 
look at all the trades your system is taking and modify the stops and targets and, uh, and even the lot size. We're still trying to find the best way to do that, um, but it's definitely possible. I'll tell you what we do for now, though. There is a way you can still use it. It's kind of a more semi-automated you know, semi or manual, probably more of a manual approach, but it still can help. And what you do is every system has a magic ID. Even Momentix, if you go into our settings, we have a unique ID or a magic ID setting. And you know we set that down here in the uh, unique ID. But, but if you look at um, your history of your trades, you can find that. Just go down here to account history, hover over some of your trades um, that you're wanting to use Pipstat on, and you'll see how it has an ID. Mine on these are just one, two, it's just the number I'm using in Pipstat. But take note of that ID, then go into Pipstat and enter that into the unique ID. By doing that, you'll then be able to have it generate what the ideal stop and target is for that system that you're trading with the robot or you know any system you're trading and it'll pop up and tell you what stops and targets should be used so now what we're what I say it's manual the manual part of it is you've got to go in now and modify your trade um, stop and target for that tr for that order that has that magic I that ID basically you know if this trade has no stop and target and say Pipstat says put in a 22 and a 51, I'll have to manually modify this order. So what, like I say, what we're looking to do in a future version of Pipstat is have a setting where you just say uh, automatically modify order, and it will go in, and if you have the unique ID set up, it will copy the stop and target over and even adjust the lot size to reflect what Pipstat suggests for the lot size. So that's going to that's going to be a pretty sweet feature that a lot of people have asked for. But like I say, there is a there is a manual approach to it still right now that you can start playing around with. The pip factor in pipstat, what that is for um, is to tell you if you should change your strategy or not, like change your um, your approach to your entry, because sometimes. Uh, even Pipstat is giving you values that are helping, but your trading might be so, I guess, uh, erratic. You know, your entries are almost random or just all over the place that the pip factor is going to be low, and it's going to tell you you need to start fine-tuning your entry more, and that could improve things even further. So the idea is, if this scale is is up here, you know, halfway or better, and it's it's kind of staying um, right in that area, then just stick with your trading plan. You know. Part of why we do that is some people give up too soon on their strategy when it starts to have losses. So if you're sitting there trading and you're doing really well one week, but then the next week you're doing poorly, if the pip stat is still, you know, still in the middle or still heading up, then you want to just stick with your plan. You don't really need to change much. It's just you're going through a normal drawdown period. But if on the other hand it's going the other direction, it's down towards zero, then you need to make some adjustments. and. Um, and that'll help improve your profitability overall. So um, some of the things I can show you here with like scaling out, it's really nice. We've had all kinds of suggestions from our members and beta testers is on this trade, say if I want to scale out, um, I guess I don't have a couple trades, but if I had a few trades, I could just say close out only the ones that are in profit and I could say close half of it. Um, you know, let me get a few orders in here so you can see this. So I've got one on the euro, one on the yen. I'll even put another one in on the yen. Okay, and then if I go to scale out, now you'll see I've got the, the ticket IDs, so I can individually close those orders that have matched that US yen symbol. Or I can uh, say close all of the yen that have that ID. I can say close all trades that are in profit or all trades. Just lots of different options, which is really helpful for different situations. You know, I've, I just used it today. I took four trades this morning and I needed to get out quickly. They all, you know, they're all heading up into profit. Actually, I had two on at a time. You know, both of them were in profit and I just hit close all trades in profit. And then I had two more that came in and I was able to select one of the IDs, close it out, come back and then close the, it just gives you lots of flexibility and it's just really fast. You know, it's, if I want to close out all yen trades right now that match, Bam, hit that button, and it immediately closed only those yen trades that were in profit. 
um, or just the entries. I didn't choose in profit. But anyways, you can see uh, if I don't want to close it all out, let's say I want to just scale out 50% or 25%, I can say um, close out 50% of that trade, and it immediately takes care of that for me. Um, this stuff just helps a lot for day trading. And the best thing is we've had suggestions from all of our beta testers and members, and the things that we've got added in here came right from the source, you know, people using it, finding better ways to use it. And uh, here's another thing, scaling in. Maybe you don't want to take your whole entire lot size all at once. So you see how it's 4.54. Of course, I've got really small stop right now, but if I uh, put in 50% or whatever I want there, cuts that lot size back so I can quickly scale into my trade. So it's all about speed with PipStat. Fast execution, fast exit, fast entry on scaling, uh, being able to see your execution spreads here. That tells you if your broker is manipulating things as far as giving you too much slippage on trades or requoting you a lot. So you can see I'm, I'm seeing my average execution spread is less than a pip, so that's really good. Um, but if you see these numbers, a few pips, that's hurting you as a day trader. And you might want to con you know, contact them, see what you can do differently, or try a different brokerage. So there's all kinds of stuff in here. That's why we figured the best way to do this than trying to go through all the different things it can do, because there's just so many different styles of trading, and you might find a better way of using something uh, that we don't even have a way of showing you here. And you can try it out for a full month um, at that link I gave you guys in the chat. Um, or you, like I said, just go to tradewestforex.com slash blog. You'll find the link right in there for uh, the trial for PipStat. A um, few more questions coming in here. Let's see. So yeah, this program, you can have more than one window up. So if you don't want to have to... Um, you know, if you've got different settings for uh, swing trading and different pairs that you just want to have instantly available, you can add another window. And you can put these on another monitor so they're out of your way. But they also, you know, you can see through them. You can stick it right there on top of your chart. You know, lots of cool little tricks. Like I say, it's a lot of stuff you'll see once you download it and try it out. But um, one thing I guess I, I could show you is it's kind of nice is let's say you've got a whole bunch of charts up like I do down here. You can have different settings configured for each one of these. So maybe you've got a four-hour chart that you, um, that you use different stop sizes on and different settings and a five-minute chart. Well, we have some options in here that you can say allow auto pair switch, and you can set up some profiles to save your settings for those pairs and time frames. And what will happen then is watch if I switch to the euro, it immediately switched pip stat to the euro and it loads my settings for, pit for that uh, time frame and pair. I can switch to USCN, see it switched right back. So that was a really cool feature that one of our members brought up that we got uh, put in, and uh, I really like that one. <laughs> it makes it really nice so you don't have to make any changes at all when you change pairs or time frames. All that stuff gets instantly recalculated. You know, if you do some swing trading or some day trading, you don't have to change your settings all the time. That really helps a lot. You know, pre prevents you from making mistakes and um, just is a lot easier way to trade. Uh, okay, let's see. Let me see. Someone says one of these links. Oh, looks like I didn't put all the W's in that FNFX link. Let me repost that. Was trying to do it kind of quickly on the spot there for you guys. Try that link now for those of you that were looking for the the Finifex broker link. I'll just double check it myself here. Okay, that should work. So if you're looking for the Finifex link, I reposted that. We just put it to tradewestforex.com/finifex. That way you don't have to try to go to this crazy URL finifex.fi/en. You know, so. TradeWestForex.com slash FinFX will take you to the broker that we use. And I just brought up the page here. You can see, you can uh, download the demo right here, um, or you can just open a micro account. You can fund it with as little as $100. 
and trade a micro lot. So that's the account we even use. Even on larger balances, we prefer that uh, for most of our trading. Um, just because the spreads and the execution, we've just found it to be better even than the ECN in some, some cases. Now, we've got some systems, though, where the ECN for certain times of the day and things are better. Um, so really, we do, have, we do kind of have a mix of both. But what I have found, like I say, for the micro is where most traders, uh, most traders are going to find themselves doing the best with, with the micro. But like I say, if you've got if you've got a thousand bucks, that's what the minimum is for the ECN. You could definitely open up both or try them both out. Okay, let me go back over here to our charts. See if there's any other questions before we get ready to wrap this up. What's the advantage to an ECN? Well, the idea with an ECN is you are seeing the raw spread of the liquidity sources the way it's supposed to work. You're supposed to see the actual bid and offer that's available to you, and then what they will do is charge a commission. The broker will charge a commission instead to make their money instead of uh, taking it from the spread or trading against you and stuff like that. So the thing about FinFX, though, is really both accounts are using the ECN. It's just that on the micro, they uh, the spreads are slightly higher because micro accounts don't have access. You're not trading a mini lot minimum, so they don't have access to the same liquidity source, and so your spreads might be a little different. But like I say, sometimes the spreads on the micro are better than the ECN. It just kind of depends. But with other brokerages, you're probably going to find that their ECNs are better than the retail account or whatever options they've got because what they'll do, like I say, is they should process your order, you know, STP, straight through processing, and just charge you a commission on the trade to do that. FXCM, uh, they, they do have, they have a good setup, but you need to request it. You need to ask for the ECN. Uh, or STP account. Otherwise, by default, they'll throw you in a fixed spread account um, where you'll deal with slippage a lot more and wider spreads and requoting and things like that. The nice thing about FinFX is they still are offering more than 50 to 1 leverage, even to, to U.S. clients. They're one of the few that you can still hedge with and have up to 300 to 1 if you request it. I think by default, they'll give you 200, but Still give you high leverage if you need it. So I'll give you guys a few more minutes for questions and just not seeing a ton. So we will get ready to wrap this up. You know, don't hold back if you have if, if you even think it's a dumb question. It's still good to get it out there because nobody else is going to see what you're saying. You don't have to worry about somebody thinking you're a fool for bringing up a basic question. A lot of times that you know. There's something that you need to get answered, and or you might think you you know you th think you have something that make uh, there's something that you're not sure about, and you every day you take a trade you believe some myth that you never got answered. So if you're not sure about something, or you have some question that's even basic, or even complex, whatever it is, take advantage of this webinar to get it answered. Okay, let's see. Um, how does higher leverage help? Well, higher leverage can help traders that most of the time it's when they're trading a little more aggressive or other times it could be just that you have a lot of positions open at once where you need the margin and the leverage available to withstand drawdowns. Um, sometimes it's you're trading a small account and, um, and your broker's minimum lot size puts you 
you know, you're using up a lot of margin as well. So margin or leverage. So it's, I would say it just kind of depends. Sometimes you don't need the higher leverage, and sometimes you, you do. It just depends on your situation. For me, I would just prefer to have it available, but um, even if I'm not going to use it, there might be times, you know, one time a month or a year even that I need it, and I'd like to just have it there for me to be available. Um, we've used NinjaTrader a little bit in the past, and we've talked about maybe adapting some of our systems to that platform. But recently, we've decided to just build our own trading platform that has kind of the benefits of all of these different platforms in one. And we've got our, some of our programmers working on that. Um, and our beta team's kind of been given some suggestions here and there. It's going to be a while, though. It's, it's, it's a big project. But once, once it's done, I think it's going to be better than MetaTrader or NinjaTrader combined, really. That's kind of what we're shooting for. Let's see, some more questions coming in now. So let's get them answered here. Can you please show again how to use different PipStat environments for the same pair? Yeah, I can show you how to do that. Um, okay, so what you do, if you have, let's say you have different settings that you want to have for maybe, let's, say, let's just say it's a different risk percent setting. Let's say for your day trades, you only want to have a half a percent risk because you take a lot of trades. So you put a half a percent there, and maybe while you're building up some trades for that initial, because before you have a certain number of trades here you specified, it needs an initial. So maybe it's only 20 pips, and you have a different ID so that you can keep those separate. So you enter a different ID. Okay, you can have all that stuff in there, and then what you can do, let's say this is all for your euro dollar one hour. Oops, I'm going to need to save that as uh, EURUSD underscore H1. That's the format. So just save it as Euro dollar underscore H1. You hit save. And now let me show you what, what will happen here. Let me just go back to the defaults. Um, let's see, I'll just load. I'll load something else. So you can see I've got different settings now, okay? Now watch what will happen. See my settings here? It's the 3,000. Everything's different than I just typed in. Watch what happens now when I switch to back to the euro dollar. See, now I've got that 5,400. I've got my half a percent, and I've got all my settings. Maybe even I want a different trade comment. Basically, anything I set up here with that, and I save as profile name euro dollar underscore h1, when I switch to it, it's going to automatically load those settings. Okay, let me do another one so you can kind of see it in action. Let's do one for the USCN 30 minutes. So I've got both those charts up. I'll change this one to maybe 1,020 or 32. Um, I'll just change these numbers up just so you can see it's different. Maybe this is a 100 pip target and stop, different settings there. And maybe I'm going to risk 1%. Maybe I even call this, you know, day trade, different comment. Okay, now I'm going to save that as the pair name underscore M30, just like the USCN shows here, and I'll hit save. Okay, now watch what happens. I switch over to the USCN. Let's make sure I've got auto pair switch on. Okay. Uh, let's see. Let's load that really quick here. Oh, you know what I did? I saved it with the Euro pair. We need to do it one more time here with USCN. We need to make sure we're on the pair. Oops. We need to make sure we're on the pair that we are saving it for. Just a quick little note there. So if I go back to the USCN, go into my settings, get okay, there's, let's do a uh, USCN 30 minute. We'll go back and set some of these like we had back to 100. I'm just throwing numbers in here just so you can see it kind of work here. 1,032, you know, day trade. Okay, I'll hit save on it now. Okay, so now if I switch between the euro dollar and the US yen, now not only is it changing the pair for me, but it's actually loading the settings for each one. See all those settings for the US yen? Now if I switch back to the euro dollar, 
the euro dollar settings load on the fly instantly that's done now so that's how you do that um, someone was asking how to do that I think it was Harold asking how to do that with Pipstat that's how you set that up what is Momentix? Momentix is uh, you can just go to our website tradewestforex.com uh, or tradewestforex.com slash Momentix either one of those probably easier just to go to our main page but you can see, re see more about it it's just a program that gives you the strategy for entering a trade does the same thing kind of like Pipstat determines the best place to put the stop and targets we have four different targets so we have a trailing stop built in um, you can see all about this. I don't want to really get into a lot of detail on it, but you can just go to tradewestforex.com to see to learn more about Momentix. And we even have a, a download you can try out for that too. Um, let's see. The key is the ID, right? So yeah, you need to make sure you use a different ID if you have all these different settings. Uh, it's just it's that's the best way to do it. You don't have to have a different ID as long as the pair is different. But say you're going to use euro dollar four hour and a euro dollar five minute, then you would want to use a different ID. For, but for different pairs alone, you don't really have to have a different ID. It just might make it easier to keep things tra keep things uh, tracked separately. Okay, I've got quite a few questions. Let me back up here. Someone says, I thought it was illegal to offer leverage for greater than 51 for U.S. clients. So, yeah, I don't know what what they've got set up or how they're still offering it at FinFX, but um, yeah, I don't know. I know that it's something we as traders shouldn't have to worry about. If they do change it on us in the future, then, you know, so be it. But at least we we can still take advantage of it while it's available. And regardless of that, that's not the main reason we go with them. They've also just been very good at trading, uh, executing our orders. They have really good spreads. Um, so there's more than just those things. Those are kind of just some extra bonuses, I guess. Well, someone's saying that they think the IRS will come after you if you use a foreign broker. Well, this is the thing. It's they're not going to come after you if you're not doing anything wrong. You can have, you know, offshore trading accounts and bank accounts and all that stuff. It's just you have to make sure, you know, consult with your accountants and make sure you're just reporting everything properly. It's when you're doing things wrong is if you're trying to hide money and things like that. You can't do that, of course. That's probably what they're talking about if you've heard that. But it's perfectly fine to have things offshore as long as you're reporting it and following the rules. Uh, let's see. So, if you're looking for like just the regular training, just get, helping you get get up to speed from ground up, um, I've kind of I've got two different programs really. I've got we've got Trade West Forex where we've got Momentix. We have build a foundation of a bank, a bank trader there. You can just go to tradewestforex.com, or you can. Uh, we've even got our other program, DDSMM. You might have heard about, and you can go to forexdecoder.com. I'll even post these links in the chat for you guys. Uh, but both of these, we have a full training program where we've got a lot of uh, training content in our members area that can get you up to speed on the, even the basics all the way through. Um, but let me post those links for you. So tradewithforex.com or forexdecoder.com, uh, you can see some more information about those. And But really, I mean, what's inside is just is like I say, it's a full-on training course from uh, really even DDSMM has a lot of that. We've got tons, you know, hundreds of hours of recordings from basics to strategy to technical indicators to uh, just technical trading approaches, fundamentals, uh, basic terminology, you know, even the more advanced terminology of things. Uh, there's tons of stuff. We've got weekly recaps that have been all recorded in there. Just a lot of different, 
a lot of different things. I don't think you need to really go anywhere else if you if you join one of our programs. We just have so much stuff we've taught over the years. Um, yes, Larry, we allow you to use Pipstat Pipsta on more than one computer. Um, we usually set it, you know, we tell traders you can go with like a laptop and a desktop, so that's why we've offered it that way. So you shouldn't have any problem running on those two computers. Um, Yeah, Charles is saying he has many brokerages that gives U.S. citizens high leverage. And even um, Baby Pips, he's saying, has a good listing of foreign brokerages for U.S. citizens. So, you I mean, there's a lot of big resources out there recommending it. So I don't think there's, you're going to have any problem with it. That's what Kenny says. The IRS doesn't care where you put your money or where your money is made as long as you pay your taxes. That's really what it comes down to as far as that goes. What does requote mean? A requote means that the price you requested, by the time you clicked the button and the order re was received at your broker server and they tried to fill it, the price had changed. That's what it usually means. Sometimes brokers use it against you if they're like a bucket shop and they'll purposely requote you and, and get you to fill your order at a worse price while they fill their order at a better price just instantly making money off you. That's why you got to be careful with some of those brokerages. But, but as far as a normal requote, it's the uh, execution speed of getting the order through to your broker server and liquidity source. That's where VPS can help uh, by uh, setting yourself up closer to your broker's execution servers. Uh, what happens at 5 p.m. when the broker widens the spread for about 20 minutes? Okay, what, what's happening there is that's called rollover. It's when the, the banks settle positions and you know so certain banks close for the day and things like that. So they have to settle and, and uh, merge positions and reopen them. Um, but uh, what that, that's just a normal thing that happens every day. And when the spread widens, it does that because there's not liquidity available close to the market during that time. The liquidity kind of gets removed and then added back on when everything gets settled. That's why you see the spreads widen with some brokerages that are showing the raw spread. Okay, we've covered a lot of different things beyond just the stop loss, the topic about stop loss today. Um, but I think, I think we've done a pretty good job. Hopefully you guys... Uh, we've done a pretty good job answering your questions and uh, explaining the stop loss side of things. If you would like to review this, uh, record this has already been recorded. You'll be able to go back to the blog, click that link on the blog, and uh, watch the replay, or just review the post. So I'm going to go ahead and close things up, and um, you know, make sure you're signed up for for these webinars and coming back to our blog because we do this every week. So keep in touch with us. We'll let you know what next week's topic will be about. And you can go review, in the meantime, all of our previous posts. So thanks again for coming, everyone. And I hope you have a great weekend. And we'll hope to see you next week.